Hello. In this video, I'm going to walk through Office Script's range object. Range is really at the center of the Excel's Office Script's object model, and this is a great place to begin if you're new to Office Scripts. Uh, range offers a whole varieties of APIs to um, help classify them into uh, simple categories. I've created this document on the left-hand side. You can find the link to this in the video description. A range uh, is anything that a single cell represents within Excel or a multiple cells. So both are um, referred to as range. Now, um, the APIs that you have can be kind of thought about in these categories. One is set of methods that return some metadata associated with a range, like its address, a number of cells, or rows or column counts. Um, and then the next is methods that return uh, some form of data associated with the range. For instance, in here I have a set of values or text that the user sees. Uh, there is a number format associated with each of these, uh, as well as there could be formulas in here. Within this, there is two varieties. One is when you're dealing with a single cell, so that's sort of the singular version of the APIs. And then the plural version of the APIs where you uh, you get uh, a two-dimensional array back, uh, each uh, cell rep represented uh, as an instance in that two-dimensional array object. Um, and th these are probably the most used APIs in here because you're often reading values or text and, and manipulating them. Um, or uh, the formulas are also in the same category. And then you have set up methods that returns uh, other range object uh, associated with the range object you're dealing with. For instance, you may want to get a next cell or the entire column or a use range and so on. So these are um, uh, very useful when you don't know exactly uh, what type of data you're dealing with. So you may want to navigate around and locate the right cell or range to either read or set values. Uh, so it becomes very important that you uh, you can navigate around using one range and just jump to another range. Um, and um, there are some, met most of these methods are off of a range, but there are also a couple where uh, workbook offers the selected range and active cells. Uh, so these are pretty much the only two methods where you get that uh, off of the workbook. Uh, and then um, there are uh, methods that return a range object in relation to another range object. For instance, you can say, hey, g give me an intersection of two ranges and you'll get another range back with, which represents the intersection of those two. Um, and then um, range also offers other methods that gives you uh, related objects like the worksheet that you're part of or um, if there's a table, a pivot table associated with that range, it gives that um, collection of those tables of pivots back and uh, style associated with a range or data validation um, linked to our range and so on. Uh, the last is a set of um, methods that are used for writing back to the range. And these can easily be explored using the action recorder. So I'm not gonna go through that in much detail. Uh, because if you record actions and see the output, you'll be able to easily uh, understand how your actions translates back to a script. Uh, and there are some other utility methods like merging and unmerging. Um, that's just some of them, uh, but there are a few other ones that are more advanced in nature. And there are other that are uh, coming soon, like for instance, finding an edge of a range. For instance, if you're here, I wanna to get to the last cell that doesn't have data and things like that. Uh, you can um, use the existing APS to do that, but it doesn't work in all scenarios. So there's gonna be some additional APS helps that'll help you uh, do those type of scenarios. Uh, now I'm gonna just showcase some of them um, just to give you a flavor of what these APIs look like. Uh, to begin with, uh, how do you get a reference to a range? So the easiest way is to create um, uh, off of the, um, say on the worksheet, you're on, uh, let's say you can get a range object using the get range API. So here um, you can use the range address notation. And since you're already in the worksheet, you don't need to prefix the worksheet name. Um, so let's say I wanna get A1 through E5 here. And um, 
the, the metadata returning APIs that I talked about, we'll use one of them, range uh, get address. So I should you know, get back the same A1 E5 that I used, right? Um, and now um, to uh, use some of these singular and two-dimensional array returning uh, constants associated with range, so let's say I want to get um, range and get one of the cells. So let's say I want to get, I don't know, um, maybe the last row and then the product column. So there'll be uh, four and two. So these are zero index. Um, so let's say I want to get its uh, text. Uh, I'll simply log this as well. So I should get, I think, chains in this case, right? Um, so that's that's that. Uh, now you will notice that there is also something called get value. Um, now for the most part, there it's the same as the text, but in some cases, like say in this case where it's a percentage, the value and then the text that the user sees are different. So um, let, let me change the the cell to get the last rating here. Um, you will see that the value is probably you know, 0.92, whereas if I get uh, its text value, it's going to be what you actually see, which is 92%. So you need to be just aware of um, what type of value that you're dealing with, and then um, and also the number format associated with it. So in this case, like if I get the um, number format. Uh, of that cell, you'll see that it's it's a percentage format. So depending on the percentage format, sorry, the number format, uh, the value in a cell might be different than what the user sees that uh, sees that cell as. So that's that's a singular um, uh, methods, and then for the two-dimensional uh, methods, you can uh, use the the entire range object here. And let's say I want to get all the texts associated. So you'll get um, a two-dimensional array object, in this case, five by five. And each of these um, individual entry represents a, a given cell. Now, on the range, you can also use a singular version, but it always defaults to the top left corner. So here, when I do this, I get the year column. Right? Um, all right, so that's just a flavor of um, the singular and the plural data retrieving APIs. Uh, to, so we already looked at uh, the get cell, which returns the range object representing a single cell. Now we can also use some of the other ones. Uh, say, for instance, um, let's say I want to get uh, get cell. Let's say uh, two zero or rather let's say zero zero and I can get the entire column um, and get its address so here obviously this is in the entire column a um, so you'll get the entire column a um, but then I can say hey give me just the use range so you'll see that I can chain I can chain um, oh, not off of the address of the range object. So I can keep chaining these methods um, to get to a range that I'm interested in. So let's say here I'm only interested in, um, I want to get the address of that. Um, so let's say I'm, I'm only interested in getting the, uh, the, uh, the address of the range, the user range, which is set of cells where there is some either data or format. Uh, I can start out with the range and you know get the cell uh, zero at the top left corner cell and then get its entire column, um, get its used range and print out its address. Uh, so, so that's one way of actually you know chaining different methods off of the range uh, because these methods return another range and off of it you can keep chaining like that. Uh, now um, there is one scenario that I thought I could showcase to. Uh, show the value of this. Now I have what I have here is uh, an Excel table on this sheet, and it has column. Uh, one of the column has a filter associated with it. Um, you know, one common scenario that users come across is to remove uh, filters associated with it on on a given column uh, where the active cell is present. So to do that. Um, 
you know, first I'll start out with getting the cell. So my goal is to remove, um, you know, clear the filter on this category column. Again, I don't know if it is part of a table or not, so I don't know I, the active cell could be somewhere outside the table or it could be in one of these other columns. Uh, but if it happens to be in a column in a table, I want to clear the cell. So to do that, uh, I'll begin by getting the cell reference. So I'll say in a workbook, get, uh, get me the active cell. Okay, so now that I have the cell, um, I can try to figure out if it is part of uh, a table. So I can say, hey, give me all the tables associated with this cell. So, so get uh, table, so it's, it's plural. So that means um, any, um, you know, range can be, can span across many different cells and many different ranges. So hence it returns all the tables. So in this case, I know I'm, I'm only interested in um, in, in, a, in a single table. If it's not um, within a table, I just, you know, I don't want to go further. So I can say, hey, if um, the table's uh, length is not equal to one, so I can say, um, you know, this is not, cell is not part of our table. So if the active cell is elsewhere, it's going to just end the script because there is nothing to uh, do further. Whereas if it's inside a table, uh, you know, I can continue. Okay. So uh, I do want to end the script if there is nothing to process. Uh, so now that I know if I'm, uh, if I'm on line eight, that means that I'm already part of a, uh, part of a table. So let me get the table reference. So I'll need that for future. So I'll get the table, uh, given this is always going to be the first table. Uh, I'll also get the range associated with the table. So I'll say, you know, give me the table range. So table offers a get range. So I'll, I'll just print this. Range address or so table range address. Just make sure I'm on the right track. Uh, so I should get you know a one through whatever that e something or right, e fifteen. So it has the filter, so I cannot see the entire uh, table. So um, so where am I right now? So I'm I know um, I'm on inside a table and I know the range address of the entire table. Uh, but what I'm interested in is to get to this column here, the actual table column, not just the range, but the actual table column object, so that I can go and find its filter and clear the filter. Uh, so I uh, I can do that by uh, using a method called get intersection on the range. So I can get the entire um, uh, column uh, of the cell, and I can get the intersection of that along with the, the entire table range and that should only give me the entire column um, using which I can then, then navigate to the table uh, table column object. So to do that uh, let's say you know uh, create a variable called intersection and what I'm interested in is on the cell object give me the entire column and then get me the um, uh, intersection with uh, the table range object. So this should get me uh, just the, the column that I'm interested in. So here I'm just going to again print the address to make sure I'm on the right track. So I should get B1 through uh, B15. And this will work even if I have rows around it. Uh, so let's say I have some rows here and columns here. Um, so in this case, it will only return me the, uh, the category columns, uh, right? So it's doing the right thing. Um, and then um, I mentioned that once I have the column, I can get to the text of the column name. So let's get the get that. Uh, say header name on the 
intersection, I'm interested in the first cell. So I'll do get cell 0, 0. I always give me the, the first cell. And I'm interested in the text. All right. Uh, so once I have the text, I can go back to the table and get me, uh, get the column by name. Let's say header name. Uh, so this gives the the actual column and then off of that I can get the filter object and then just clear it. So clear is a method off of the table uh, filter. Now the reason I have to do all this is because the range itself doesn't have that um, or I may not be able to get to the correct filter object off of the range. Uh, so um, that's why I need to link the range object with the table object and somehow get the, the column uh, and then off of the column, I have to get the filter object and clear it. So hopefully, uh, when I do this, it'll just clear that column. So I can start out by, you know, running outside. Obviously, nothing will happen. Um, and now if I'm inside of a table, uh, but not in a column where there is no filter on it, uh, and then nothing really will happen because there is nothing to clear. Uh, but if I'm on a column, uh, see that the active cell is in a column inside a table that has a filter, it will clear uh, that filter on the column. So you'll see that the table expanded because it cleared all the filter. So that's just a flavor of what you can do by um, linking range with other objects and chaining methods and getting to the, the underlying object you're interested in and executing methods, whether to retrieve or um, or to write back or you know uh, use methods like clear uh, in this case. So uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit of information about the range and where to get started out with. If you have more uh, scenarios in mind, please do leave a comment.